Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Armstar YouTube channel. I'm Thomas and today we're taking a look at FreeSky's Twin X Lite and their Twin Lite Pro module. And of course, since we're sailplane nuts, I'll be talking about them from the lens of a glider pilot. Okay, so today, first things first, what is FreeSky Twin? So FreeSky has a number of different protocols on the market right now. They have ACCST, Access, and a relatively new Tandem, which is a dual frequency protocol with both 2.4 gigahertz and 900 megahertz. Well, Twin is the latest protocol from FreeSky. It is a LoRa or long range based protocol where according to FreeSky, it can get tens of kilometers of range. In addition to being a LoRa system, Twin runs on dual 2.4 gigahertz frequencies in the active active configuration, which is different than other redundant protocols that are usually active standby. So being active active means both 2.4 gigahertz bands are active on the transmitter and receiver at the same time, providing high reliability. Great. So what does that mean for sailplane pilots? If you're flying in a city or areas with higher RF noise, LoRa plus active active redundancy means you can fly safer with less potential interference from the surrounding. For large sailplanes like the 4 meter F5J gliders where you're pushing it to the limits of your vision and where one of the antennas is often shielded by the carbon airframe, Twin can provide a much better connection, allowing you to more confidently and safely chase the thermals downwind. Now, if you fly DLGs in a very clean RF environment, Twin doesn't really offer any advantages. But with that being said, why not? It's nice to have extra range and signal robustness in case you compete at a noisy field, if someone else's equipment is malfunctioning, or if something just isn't working right for whatever reason. Having that extra buffer and robustness is never bad. Now on my regular field, there is a spot where the signal can sometimes drop off significantly, regardless of whether I'm using FreeSky's ACCST or Access Radio's Spectrum or Futaba. I've tried both the Twin X Lite and the Twin Light Pro module mounted on my X18, and both had strong signal throughout the field. So there are two products I wanted to show you today. The first being the Twin X Lite. This one is actually the Twin X Lite S. And before we talk about that though, remember to hit like and subscribe to our channel. And not only does that make me feel warm and fuzzy, but it tells YouTube that the video is great so they can show it to more RC lovers just like you. Now, if you've been flying FreeSky and DLGs in the past few years, chances are you're already familiar with the X Lite Pro running OpenTX. Now it's been wildly popular due to its small size and ergonomics, which makes it really suitable for us DLG guys, you know, swinging around like this. Now the Twin X Lite is basically an updated version of the radio running the Ethos operating system. And in addition, it runs the Twin protocol, which has a single output of 100 milliwatts on this radio. And the Twin X Lite also supports Access and ACCST D16. Now FreeSky also says it's compatible with some ELRS systems, but I haven't tried that. When you place the Twin X Lite beside the X Lite Pro, the first thing you'll notice is the large color display that totally eclipses the screen on the X Lite Pro. This is the Twin X Lite S, which comes with the brighter screen, but the regular Twin X Lite is bright enough to be enjoyed outside. Another thing you'll notice right away is the matte screen. Compared to a glossy screen, it's not quite as sharp, but since it's a touch screen, having a matte finish means you're not gonna see all those nasty fingerprints all over the screen after a day of use. Now, speaking of touch screen and navigation, the Twin X Lite has a vastly superior navigation system compared to the X Lite Pro, utilizing the same buttons and wheel you'll find on the full-size Ethos radios. The grips on the Twin are fatter, meaning you can have a more relaxed grip while still holding it tightly. I feel the grip on the old X Lite Pro is a bit thin, so you need to squeeze your hand a little bit more to get a secure grip, and especially if you have larger hands. The grip on both X Lites are the same length, but the old X Lite Pro has an optional extended battery cap that lengthens the grip and allows you to install a bigger battery. And I really like that extended length. Otherwise, it does feel a little bit short and stubby in my hands. Not a big deal though, and it does mean it's a more compact package. In terms of weight, the Twin X Lite is heavier at 460 grams compared to the X Lite Pro, which is 390 grams. And the build quality on both are very good, but I would give the edge to the old X Lite Pro as there is absolutely zero give and feels very solid when I hold and twist the radio, whereas there's a tiny bit of creaking on the Twin X Lite. Okay, trim and buttons. 
The trim situation on the old X-Lite Pro has always been a compromise, so I'm very happy with the six dedicated trims on the twin. Plus, it comes with an additional four programmable buttons on the bottom. I haven't found a use for those buttons yet, but I'm sure I'll think of something for them to do. In terms of basic trim buttons, they're hidden underneath the sliding screen along with the power button. While it's easily accessible, I think the down trim is a bit squishy, especially if you have bigger thumbs. And for the sliding screen, I got this question from a few of you. Don't worry, it'll stay open even when you're spinning around and throwing the OGs. Now the second product I wanted to talk about is the Twin Light Pro module. So for those of you who already own an Ethos radio and want to use the Twin protocol, this module will attach to the module bay located at the back of your radio. You'll need to update your Ethos version to a newer version that supports Twin, but that's an easy process. The great thing about the module compared to the Twin X Lite is the adjustable output. You can set it to 10, 25, 100, 200 and 500 megawatts, allowing you to fine tune the power for your specific needs. The module itself is very well made using a combination of plastic and CNC metal, which helps give it a very solid and durable feel and the metal helps with heat dissipation as well for higher power outputs. Now it was a pretty tight fit onto my X18 and the first time I put it on, I had to do it with a little bit more force before it gave me a nice satisfying click. Now in terms of weight, after you add the module and the two antennas to your radio, expect it to add around 50 grams, but it is not as noticeable as I would have thought. That being said, I used to use the X10S and iX20, so I'm not the most weight sensitive person for radios, even for flying DLGs. So in conclusion, I think the twin protocol is great for gliders, especially larger gliders like F5J models or cross country events where you may be flying at incredible distances. The redundancy is very welcome for any competition flying where there are often many, many radios operating at the same time, whether it's for F3K, F5J, F3 RES, etc. And I think the Twin X Lite feels really good in my hands and it's light, it's small, making it really easy to pack. It's going to be very popular with the DLG crowd, just like the X Lite Pro. And I think it'll actually pull in a lot of guys who wanted the X Lite form factor, but didn't want to learn OpenTX. Now, for those of you who are nodding to that, you'll have a much easier time with the Ethos operating system on this radio. The Twin module is great. I've spent some time with it on my X18 and it just works really well. It's fantastic for those of you who like the traditional form factor radios or need more switches like the X18 or X20. So between the Twin X Lite and the module, I think every Free Sky Glider pilot is covered. And that's it for today. So if you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.